Joining us now, CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Sarah Azari. Sarah, do you agree with Ariva's assessment of, of how the evidence was presented and the interpretation perhaps by the jury? Well, I think the defense on a uh, going with a mistake is, is rather misleading. That is not the law, and Ariva is correct. It is not a defense. Not only that, but we have to remember that the crime of manslaughter itself is about a mistake. It's the accidental killing of another human being. So there is no mistake defense to a mistaken crime. And accidents can be crimes. And in addition to the racist trope that uh, Ariva brought up, you know, the facts aren't there. The idea that... Uh, you know, there was a use of force expert who said not only deadly force was unjustified, but even the use of a taser was unreasonable because there was a passenger, there were other officers around. And so, uh, you know, and that this is not an oopsie. I love that line. It's not an oopsie. Um, a mistake is not a defense. I think the, pro the, the facts, obviously, and the law are on the side of the prosecution, Anna, but it really depends on whether this jury can... Um, uh, not apply their heart to the facts, but apply the law to the facts. And I'll say one more thing. You know, I, I, my only critique of the prosecution in closing was that I think they should have reminded the jury of that, that they, you know, she can be emotional, she can be remorseful, she can be agonized and traumatized, but those go to, that's a sentencing issue. You know, those are not defenses to this, uh, this crime and they need to follow the law and not the heart. Okay, let's turn to the Gillen Maxwell trial where jury deliberations are also underway now. Maxwell is charged with six federal counts for allegedly recruiting teenage girls into Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking ring. That's the allegation here. Now, during the trial, four women testified that Epstein sexually abused them and that Maxwell aided and sometimes participated in that abuse. We learned a short time ago, jurors sent a note asking for transcripts of testimonies from at least three of those four accusers. And, and Sarah, I'll come back to you. To kick this one off, a key line from the prosecution in all of this has been, quote, Maxwell was crucial to the whole scheme. Epstein could not have done this alone, while the defense has argued Maxwell herself was manipulated by Epstein, suggesting she, too, is a victim. How clear-cut is this case? It's not clear-cut, Anna. And, you know, the defense is saying Maxwell is not Epstein. That's the headline of this case for the defense. But, you know, let me say this. We are in the middle of, well, in the thick of a Me Too era. And I, for one, um, going to court every day and knowing the reality of the situation, don't believe all women. But the fact of the matter is, this is a she said, she said, she said, she said case. Um, and we're in a different era. You know, 10 years ago, um, th this could have been a very defensible case. Today, I'm not so sure. And the idea for the defense, I think the strongest uh, argument they've made is the financial motive. The idea that at least two of these accusers never brought up Maxwell every time they sat down with law enforcement for, for over decades. And they suddenly, you know, they pulled Maxwell into the scenario when they lawyered up with their PI uh, lawyers and sat with the FBI after they realized there's an Epstein Victims Fund from which they've collected millions of dollars and could collect more if Maxwell is convicted. That is really the strongest argument. But again, we're in a different time. And, you know, you have these four accusers telling similar stories of sexual abuse by uh, Epstein, the fact that Maxwell groomed them and brought them to Epstein and then looked the other way. We have to remember, Anna, that there is an instruction uh, that, that's on the prosecution side, which is about conscious avoidance. The idea that Maxwell may have known what's going on behind closed doors, may have very well been manipulated by Epstein, even if the jury believes that, but that she consciously uh, turned a blind eye to those facts. And so, um, you know, this is a case I think that is going to uh, require, it's not so clear cut, it's going to require some deliberation, yeah. but uh, we have the holidays coming up. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a verdict before Friday. Ladies, thank you both so much. We'll, of course, stay on top of Thanks. any. Uh, developments Merry and deliberations. Christmas to both of you. Nice to see you. Merry Christmas as well. Thank Merry. you.